Welcome to the great Korean foreign policy debate, part two. In part one, I interviewed the national security advisor of the current opposition party. That interview is posted on YouTube and the link will be posted under your Zoom chat function. Today, I will interview the national security advisor of the currently ruling Democrat Party. To be fair to our interviewees, I want to take a few minutes to replay the program introduction we had last week. So welcome to the great Korean foreign policy debate. Uh, this is a slow motion debate spread over three weeks, designed to illuminate important issues rather than to elicit gotcha moments. South Korea's national security decisions are immensely con consequential. Historically, when big power wars have occurred in Asia, uh, they mostly occur over Korea. Today, along with threats to Taiwan's autonomy, North Korean nuclear weapons create the greatest current risk of a big war. Foreigners easily neglect the importance of Korea. It is Asia's pivot power. It's delicately balanced. Uh, its economy uh, quite dependent on China. Its security dependent on the alliance with the United States. Uh, but it's much more complicated than that even. Uh, to manage North Korea, uh, China needs or South Korea needs support from both China and the United States. Samsung's uh, phones sell more than Apple in the United States, and the United States is very dependent on computer chips from Samsung. Many people think of Korea as the poor cousin of Japan because it once was very poor. When I first visited South Korea in 1973, it was one of the poorest countries in the world. But now the average South Korean is a little uh, better paid than the average Japanese. Korea's ports, airports, railroads, and universal internet connections are superior to the United States. Americans think of Japan as the big Northeast Asian ally and Korea as the small one. On the map and in population, that's true. But South Korea's military budget is about 10% larger than Japan's. Every adult male in Korea serves in the military. And that military is practiced and hardened by frequent challenges. South Korea's policies powerfully influence the risk of war over North Korea, a war that could quickly engage both China and the United States. South Korea has also become a global cultural force. In the 1970s, an evening out in Seoul usually meant hearing a Fili Filipino band or else hearing a different Filipino band. Now, Korean classical violinists uplift musical performances all over the globe. Korean rock groups provide some of the world's coolest popular music and dance. Korean movie directors create Academy Award quality movies. Korean scientists are world leaders 
in developing nuclear fusion. Therefore, when we hear the views of Korean presidents, uh, national security advisors, we're hearing things that are globally important. Uh, this race for the Korean presidency has seen polls for the major candidates bouncing around like stock market volatility. A third party candidate is influ influential enough to possibly be a kingmaker this year or a president five years hence. Tonight, we will hear from the National Security Advisor of the more conservative party, the People Power Party, whose forerunners have run Korea for, most of the for much of the modern era. On February 3rd, next Thursday, U.S. time, I'll, view, I'll interview the National Security Advisor to uh, the other major candidate. And on February 10th, I'll interview the presidential candidate of the third party. Because our audience today has many languages and accents, we will provide simultaneous captioning. The caption providers are first rate, but perfect simultaneous captioning is impossible. So we will provide a corrected version when the video is posted on YouTube later. So that, that was the introduction uh, from last, last week. Uh, today, I'll be, I'll be speaking with Ambassador Wee Sung Lok. Ambassador Wee is a retired career diplomat with over 35 years in the Foreign Service of the Republic of Korea. Currently, he's a visiting scholar in the Asia Center of Seoul National University. His last Foreign Service post was as Korean ambassador to Russia, one of the most important roles. Most of his other posts related to North North American affairs or to uh, North Korean problems. His assignments included Director General uh, uh, for the North American Affairs Bureau, uh, Deputy Chief of Mission at the Embassy of Korea in Washington, Chief Negotiator in the Six Party Talks with North Korea over North Korea, and Special representative for the Korean Peninsula uh, Peace and Security Affairs. He also taught international relations at Seoul University. Ambassador, we welcome. Uh, maybe we could start by your uh, elaborating. What are the most important security questions facing Korea? And what are the most important controversies about uh, dealing with those questions? Uh, specifically, how do your party's positions differ uh, from those of the other major party? Um, uh, first of all, uh, uh, allow me to express my gratitude to Dr. Uh, William Overholt uh, who are hosting the interview and um, who has given a very warm uh, words of introduction. Uh, I also would like to uh, thank um, uh, the, uh, Dr. Songyun Lee who helped arrange this interview. And also uh, I stay grateful to Harvard's uh, Kennedy School of uh, Government. Um, with regard to your uh, question, um, uh, let me say this. Uh, the biggest security challenge uh, for Korea is, of course, the threat from North Korea. Uh, the weapons of asymmetric uh, nature, including a nuclear weapon and missiles, make the threat to South Korea an, an existential one. Another security 
question is to charter the course of uh, foreign policy in the midst of a rising strategic competition between the United States and, and China. Uh, there are more than uh, one view regarding how to deal with uh, North Korean issue. Um, there are two schools of thoughts uh, regarding the policy toward North Korea. The progressive side, which is an engager, and the conservative side, uh, uh, which is a sort of a hardliner. Each school has its own uh, reasoning and support base. Uh, the candidate Lee Jae Myung, who I uh, work as his uh, national security advisor, belongs to the progressive side. However, he has his own ideas and approach which are imbued with uh, pragmatism. Uh, for his policy making, he intends to start with uh, national consensus building. And then he will, uh, first of all, secure efficient deterrence against the new type of uh, threat North Korean nuclear missile pose. The deterrence will be uh, based on South Korea's own uh, means, as well as with its uh, uh, combined ones with the United States. The next step will be to seek uh, dialogue and uh, negotiation with uh, North Korea. Finally, he will prepare for uh, the negotiation uh, package, which is effective. With regard to US-China uh, issue, there also have been um, contending views in Seoul as to where South Korea should stand between the United States and China. Some argue South Korea should uh, take side with the United States. Some others say that it is better to side with the emerging power China and some insist that South Korea should uh, maximize its national interest by making decisions issue by issue. Uh, the South Korean governments have been handling um, this matter in most of the times on an issue by issue basis. However, as the competition between the United States and China intensifies, the gravity and demand exerted by the two countries on Korea are also growing incrementally. Uh, subsequently, it has become more difficult for South Korea to navigate between the two countries with the uh, existing uh, practices. Uh, let me stop here. Well, thank you very much. Uh, when, when you're thinking about positioning between the United States and China, uh, a key issue is whether the, whether the US is a reliable ally. Um, uh, do President Trump's volatility the disorderly Afghanistan withdrawal, the limp response so far to the Ukraine crisis, and the Bidens uh, waiting a, a year before it nominated an ambassador to Korea raise questions about its reliability? Um, the United States is the only uh, ally, treaty ally of uh, Korea. To my knowledge, uh, Korea is the only uh, case which has a combined uh, defense posture with the United States. And, and the uh, Korea-US combined deterrence posture is the core pillar of uh, the security, uh, national security of South Korea. Uh, most of the polls show that the approval rating uh, about the alliance among Koreans is over 70%. Uh, 
However, the strong support for the alliance should not be taken for granted. It should be managed and nurtured well all the time to enable it uh, to stay strong regardless of uh, challenges in politics and public opinion. Uh, we have learned this lesson during uh, the Trump presidency. Not a small number of our Korean people think that we have to possess our nuclear weapon or means to counter the nuclear threat from North Korea. Some even argue that we have to have the United States nuclear weapons redeployed in Korea. However, uh, uh, candidate Lee Jae-myung supports neither of uh, these ideas. He thinks the first thing we have to do is to further strengthen our conventional deterrence capabilities in parallel with enhancing the US-Korea uh, combined preparedness. Also, he is of the view that we have to enhance the efficiency of the extended deterrence provided by uh, the United States. However, all of them cannot be an uh, ultimate solution. The, the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula and the establishment of permanent peace is the one. Mr. Lee is committed uh, to exerting all his efforts for the resolution of uh, the North Korean nuclear problem uh, from the first day of his presidency. Uh, having uh, said all this, um, uh, once again, um, uh, I don't believe all these issues are uh, necessarily uh, are not uh, related to the reliability of the alliance. Uh, however, as I stated, the alliance should be uh, managed and nurtured well with a due attention, a due amount of attention and care, but particularly in um, the period of government transition closer and more thoughtful coordination and consultations are required. Thank you. Um, another aspect of the relationship with the United States, uh, the President Biden is promoting an alliance of democracies and a stance of ideological confrontation with China. South Korea and America obviously both share a devotion to democracy, but Korea's history is complicated. Uh, uh, Park Chung-hee's dictatorship saved South Korea from what was then an economically and militarily superior North Korea. Then democracy was built on the educated middle-class society that Park's economic program created. Uh, Taiwan and Singapore and other places have had similar experiences. Uh, should South Korea join the US in a crusade for democracy for every society at every level of development? Well, um... After Korea became independent from the Japanese colonialism, uh, it was among the least uh, uh, developed countries and um, uh, it was thrown into a war. However, Korea was able to uh, achieve economic prosperity as well as democratization. Uh, we do take pride in having done so. As candidate Lee puts it, what Korea has accomplished would not have been uh, possible had it not been for the help from the United States. In a way, Korea's uh, story of enduring severity before a success uh, corroborate with uh, what Mr. Lee has gone through personally. Uh, starting from extreme poverty, Mr. Lee reached the prestigious class of lawyers, but instead of joining a big law firm, he began working for the socially disadvantaged, underprivileged, 
and weak. For a long time, he has been a civil uh, movement activist. Now, as a presidential candidate, uh, Mr. Lee thinks the past experiences of Korea's economic growth and democratization uh, should become a part of Korea's own identity when it pursues its foreign policy goals. Korea's experiences as such can serve as a good example of those other countries uh, to whom the goals of economic development and uh, democratization appears to be mutually uh, exclusive. They are, according to our experiences, mutually reinforcing. Our transformation from a poverty-stricken former colony to a prosperous democracy can serve to be an exemplary case to the like nations. And this, I think, is exactly a point where we can contribute to the economic and political development of many developing countries. I also think um, Korea and the United States can work together in this area. Thank you. Yes. Uh, actually, I should have mentioned in my introduction the other aspect of South Korea, which is that it's a truly exemplary democracy and and the the election you're involved in is a good example of that um, are there tensions between washington's desire for steady sanctions and the democrat party's desire to offer incentives for peace negotiations um, if there is a catastrophe in North Korea, your government may want to offer humanitarian assistance. Will that cause difficulties with Washington? I think um, humanitarian assistance is uh, a separate issue. Uh, uh, we uh, are dealing with North Korea on um, uh, political, diplomatic, military issues. But um, humanitarian issue has to be handled uh, in a separate uh, dimension. Uh, even though uh, we are uh, uh, working together with Washington and other partners to deal with um, the provocations made by North Korea, we are also considering uh, uh, providing um, uh, medical and um, uh, what, um, uh, health uh, assistance. Uh, we try to offer um, uh, some vaccines to North Korea under these circumstances. Uh, so that's, that should be and is a, a separate issue uh, from uh, the political issue. Thank you. Um, today's greatest danger to Asian peace might be US-China tensions over Taiwan possibly even more dangerous than the issue of North Korean nuclear weapons. How should South Korea deal with those tensions? Uh, in the event of a Chinese invasion of Taiwan, the US may want to deploy its troops based in Korea to support Taiwan. How should South Korea react to that? Um, I agree that um, uh, Taiwan issue uh, is the uh, most sensitive uh, security issue in the region. Um, in the joint statement uh, of, in May 2021, um, uh, President uh, Moon Jae-in and President Biden emphasized that um, the uh, Maintaining peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait is the important issue. Uh, from the standpoint of Korea, which is uh, facing a massive asymmetrical uh, military threat from North Korea, um, having to deal with uh, another large scale security issue 
uh, being broken out in the neighbor would be uh, extremely undesirable. Uh, to be sure, our defense capabilities are preoccupied in coping with an, an adversary uh, who is armed with both nuclear and conventional weapons and um, who shows the most unpredictable uh, behavior in the world. Under such a severe security environment, uh, Korea has to develop uh, an alliance relationship with the United States on the one hand and manage a partnership with China on the other. Uh, primarily, um, it would be uh, for Korea's best interest to exert a due effort to prevent the situation in which um, China uses military forces against Taiwan. Uh, anything beyond that, um, in my opinion, is a hypothetical uh, for now. Um, and uh, since our campaign team is yet to uh, take over uh, the power from the incumbent um, uh, government, I, I, I don't think um, I would be, um, uh, it would be appropriate to elaborate or, or go into any uh, further. Uh, thanks very much. Um... You've been a, a top negotiator on North Korean issues. Uh, many years of tough sanctions haven't stopped the North Korean nuclear weapons program. Historic uh, symmetry under President Trump, including his saying that he was in love with Kim Jong-un, uh, haven't stopped the nuclear program. Now North Korea is testing extraordinarily improved missiles. Uh, is a new crisis inevitable? Uh, alternatively, is North Korea's nuclear status becoming normalized? Uh, is, there, is there some new combination of incentives and pressures that might moderate or el eliminate North Korea's nuclear weapons? Uh, uh, North Korea starts the year uh, 2022 with a very provocative uh, uh, posture, uh, firing um, uh, missiles with a very short intervals. On top of that, uh, North Korea made an announcement which implied that it might uh, breach the self-imposed moratorium and may resume uh, major provocations such as nuclear test or, uh, or long range missile launches. Uh, the pattern of uh, behavior of such nature uh, makes us think that North Korea would not uh, give up its nuclear weapons easily. But we must not give up the goal of uh, the complete denuclearization of uh, the, uh, North Korea. Uh, North Korea's nuclear status uh, cannot become uh, normalized. Candidate Lee uh, on this matter stated two uh, basic um, stances. First, uh, behind the nuclear issue, he said, a multitude of factors are at play, uh, ranging from a mutual mistrust, security dilemma, and willingness to hold on to its nuclear program as means for bullying and um, bargaining to its advantage. As with uh, such a variety of factors involved in the issue, uh, there should also be a holistic approach uh, for a comprehensive solution and a multitude of measures to be used in resolving the issue. And second, he said, although the negotiations and engagement with North Korea will be conducted in a flexible manner, uh, breaches of uh, promises or wrongdoings by North Korea will be addressed and responded in a square manner. Based on these basic stances, Mr. Lee's policy on the North Korean nuclear issue will first 
not only use talks and negotiations, but also mix a variety of uh, measures such as incentives, disincentives, pressures, and sanctions. Uh, second, um, use tactics for advancing denuclearization and establishing peace and make these two processes benefit from each other's progress and generate a um, synergy effect. From the history of the issue, uh, we have learned that we need to advance those two tracks to make a meaningful progress. Uh, third, um, international coordination and inter-Korean talks should be conducted side by side and make them work complementarily to each other for the goal of denuclearization and um, uh, peace building. Close coordination in, in this sense with the United States and Korea, US, Japan trilateral coordination are crucial in this endeavor. Fourth, step-by-step uh, -step approach is unavoidable due to the fact that North Korea is extremely adamant to it. In case we accept the idea of agreeing on pieces and implement them step-by-step, -step, we have to work out ways and means to avoid being trapped in salami tactics. Also, uh, thin and small pieces of uh, salamis may be thrown away more easily. So we will have to make uh, the pieces as big as possible and agree on big chunks. Fifth, the conventional um, uh, practice in addressing this problem was to agree on, on easier issues as an initial step. But easily made agreements may uh, break down easily. With that said, we may have to consider the idea of uh, mixing easier issues with more significant ones, such as denuclearization, security, and peace, even in the first chunk of agreement. In a nutshell, uh, the Lee administration will do its best to achieve uh, meaningful progress in the denuclearization of North Korea and the establishment of uh, enduring peace on the peninsula through a realistic and a pragmatic approach. In this whole process, we will consult and coordinate very closely with the United States, an ally, and Japan, a close partner. Right. Thank you. You mentioned uh, the United States and Japan, of course. Uh, what about the role of China? Uh, China's, China's uh, posture about North Korea seems to have uh, changed uh, in in recent times. Uh, are are they as essential a part of of a uh, process of of pressing for denuclearization as as the United States and Japan are? China is a, uh, a very influential uh, power. Uh, on the Korean Peninsula issue. Uh, as we all uh, understand, um, uh, relatively speaking, China has the most influential country to uh, North Korean regime. China is committed to the denuclearization of uh, the Korean Peninsula. However, China has also another uh, 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 security concern on the peninsula, that is the peace and stability on the peninsula, which is the um, uh, geo uh, strategic and geopolitical interest of China. China seeks 
all in all, it is two goals, denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula and peace and stability of the Korean Peninsula. Sometimes these two goals doesn't go together. When we try to push the goal of denuclearization, we need to have the cooperation of China in, in the implementation of sanctions. That's one example. And at, at that time, when, when it comes to sanction implementation, China is concerned about the stability of North Korean regime. So sometimes between this geopolitical interest and the non proliferation interest, uh, Chinese policy uh, direction is not coherent. On top of that, um, a recent development in um, US-Chinese bilateral relationship has negative impact on the Chinese strategic thinking. More and more, China is um, seeing um, uh, international issues in the spectrum of uh, rivalry between uh, Beijing and Washington. Uh, Korean Peninsula issue, North Korean nuclear issue is no exception. Uh, that is a pretty worrisome development. Thank you. So, uh, how do you see North Korea? Uh, in, in the West, uh, many people, uh, especially senior people in Washington, see it as a, a fearsome tiger uh, building nuclear weapons to threaten and even take over South Korea. Um, Others see it as a nearly helpless mouse with an economy 2% the size of South Korea's, no real friends, a conventional military that's pretty hopeless despite large numbers. Uh, in, in that view, Pyongyang depends on nuclear weapons because it basically doesn't have anything else. Uh, how do we think about a tiny mouse with a giant tiger head? Um, I have been dealing with North Koreans for, for even decades. Um, North Korea is a peculiar country which possesses uh, perverse uh, views on the external uh, affairs and is obsessed with a besieged uh, fortress mentality. In the late 80s, uh, while uh, then communist giants like the Soviet Union and China began their reform and um, system transition, North Korea stayed unchanged uh, because its political power dynamics uh, made it impossible for the country to attempt any changes. Uh, further, the economic success of uh, its rival, the South, the South Korea, uh, made it difficult for them to shift its way toward the correct direction of uh, the history. Instead, North Korean leaders, in seeking a way of survival, chose to pursue the nuclear weapons program. As a result, not only did they um, endanger the security of uh, neighboring countries, including South Korea, uh, but also their own security and development. Since 2017, with the installation of the economic sanctions regime, which is um, arguably the severest ever in the history of the United Nations, North Korea's external trade volumes has been reduced by more than 80%. Even though North Korean economy is a closed, highly autarkic one, the sanctions must have done a severe blow to them. What have made things even worse for North Korean economy uh, would be the self-imposed uh, shutdown of uh, its border 
due to the pandemic situation since uh, 2020. Uh, nevertheless, uh, the North Korean regime continues its missile launching provocations this year and implies that um, it will do something bigger. This kind of brinkmanship tactics, while it may seem crazy to others, may make um, perfect sense to them because they would think that it is working. For them, these tactics are reasonable, tactical, and even valid. In this sense, uh, your description of North Korea as a mouse with a giant um, tiger head uh, sounds very interesting. What I might add is that um, with this tiny body, a mouse cannot possibly um, sustain a giant um, tiger head. Uh, I think in its um, uh, eventuality, uh, I doubt that a North Korean brinkmanship will be successful. Besides, um, some experts say that the so-called marketplace generation of North Korea, that is a, um, a new generation of North Koreans uh, who managed to survive uh, by the help of the marketplaces uh, that, that, uh, that uh, sprouted um, uh, all over the country, rather than by the grace of the great leader or the party, is a strand of uh, new hope to change North Korea. Only time will tell uh, whether such an expectation will come true. Uh, at, this, at the social level, uh, there does seem to be a strand of new hope. Uh, at the national political level, um, I wonder, uh, Kim Jong-un promised his people a change of national priorities to focus on the economy. And he tied that to a peace and nuclear deal with foreign countries. Uh, after that failed, does he have any ability to try again? Will people around him say, look, you, you tried that, uh, it was a disaster. Um, is it possibly a waste of time to reach out to him again for a deal? Well, that I don't know. Um, uh, as I put it um, at the beginning, um, North Korean regime is peculiar. Um, it has own, it, 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 they have their own um, uh, worldview. Uh, they have their own logic, which is quite different from our logic. Um, I think, I don't think um, uh, any kind of prediction um, in the future of North Korea near term uh, is, is very risky. Um, so far, uh, we don't see any sign of changes. Um, uh, on the marketplace, among young generation, we see some, some potential signal, but uh, what the regime is doing against all those um, new trends is uh, very uh, authoritarian and dictatorial. Uh, they think about the um, uh, uh, cultural purity movement, uh, uh, conducted by the regime recently. Uh, I think a regime is aware of uh, uh, the new phenomenon from the bottom. And regime is taking actions in order to handle uh, the new situations. Thank you. If North Korea is internationally helpless without its nuclear weapons, 
do we need to reassure it or bolster it in other ways uh, in order to make progress in, in, in getting it to think about reducing its nuclear capability? Um, if so, how do we do that? Um, the hard part is how to get North Korea to the dialogue table. North Korea is refusing any kind of um, contact these days, particularly after the Hanoi debacle. Uh, it's a hard part, but we shouldn't give it up. We need to uh, we need to continue to make efforts to bring North Korea to the table. Uh, of course, at the same time, we need to um, uh, check our deterrence posture. We need to uh, uh, put sanctions in place, but at the same time, we need to reach out and try to get them to the table. Um, and um, in a, a diplomatic move, we need to take um, uh, some um, actions of reaching out uh, their leaders and um, the regime. Uh, I'm not um, saying that we need to make any substantial concessions to, to, to get them to the table, but um, I'm talking about some protocol type of uh, gesture, uh, some type of gesture that will satisfy uh, North Korea's chronic um, uh, recognition deficit syndrome. So all in all, um, uh, I support uh, engagement with North Korea. I support dialogue. I support um, uh, uh, negotiations. Thank you. Um, let me turn to relations with Japan. Uh, for years, Alliance Unity in dealing with China and North Korea has been disrupted by tensions over history between Japan and South Korea. Uh, recently, there's been some progress on military cooperation. Uh, is there a way to finally resolve these tensions? Um. And there is no such issue as um, uh, Seoul-Tokyo uh, relationship uh, that uh, makes um, people uh, on the other side of the Pacific um, uh, difficult to uh, understand. Uh, we have a lot of issues, uh, starting from history issue, uh, uh, cultural issue, and um, security issue, including Jisomia. Uh, observing the current um, uh, standing of Seoul-Tokyo relations, I would say that in general, stalled situation continues. But um, slight uh, signs of hope are detected uh, on both sides. Uh, in Japan, um, Kishida administration um, came in. And in Seoul, we'll have new uh, government uh, soon. Most recently, uh, we had a, uh, pretty positive signals from uh, major candidates in, in Seoul. Uh, candidate Lee Jae-myung and candidate Yoon Song-yeol uh, both expressed a firm intention to improve relations with uh, Japan. Candidate Lee believes it is one of the top foreign policy priorities to restore the bilateral relationship uh, with Japan. He has already delivered a sincere message to improve the, the rock Japan relations to the Japanese ambassador in Seoul when he personally met him uh, by the end of last year. Candidate Lee has a comprehensive understanding about the significance and the importance of uh, uh, the Seoul, Washington, Tokyo coordination. 
he believes it plays a crucial role in deterring um, North Korean provocation. Also, he uh, recognizes that the trilateral coordination uh, may function to stabilize the region. On top of that, um, uh, Mr. Lee uh, thinks the coordination among the three countries uh, which has advanced technologies can be a very powerful mechanism in addressing uh, upcoming challenges the 21st century faces. Uh, once the uh, Lee jae administration um, takes office, it would make its best efforts to recover the Seoul-Tokyo bilateral ties. Uh, as to the roadmap of uh, uh, improvements, uh, I don't have much details to share at this moment. But what I can say is that um, we are doing due diligence in reviewing various policy ideas to move forward. Thank you. Uh, following up on that a little bit, uh, if, if there were a possibility of complete peace on the Korean Peninsula or even uh, reunification, would your big neighbors, China and Japan, welcome that? Uh, or would Japan perhaps see that as, as uh, a challenge, a big, a, a, a very big Korea uh, becoming a much more serious competitor with Japan? Uh, in China, we sometimes hear worries that a, a more peaceful and unified Korea uh, might side with the United States. Uh, how, how do you see the attitude of those two big powers? Um, I just assume that the uh, unification led by uh, South Korea. Um, having said that, um, a lot of things will depend upon the um, relationship between South Korea and Japan and relationship between South Korea and China. The current bilateral relationship will be a precursor for those two giant countries, uh, precursor to the situation that will come after uh, reunification. If the current bilateral relationship uh, is normal and mutually beneficial, uh, those two countries will be beneficial or, or open-minded to the, the unified Korea. Uh, if not, if that is not the case at the moment, uh, they will have different views. Uh, having said that, I think um, uh, Japan is more uh, open-minded um, uh, uh, toward the reunified Korea uh, than China. China has its own geopolitical interest. So uh, we have to think about how to, um, to calm down Chinese geopolitical interest when we are trying to get the country reunified. Uh, thank you. Uh, further on the, uh, the question of uh, peaceful relationship between the two Koreas, uh, in West Germany, conservatives and progressives agreed to jointly pursue a long-range policy of Ostpolitik toward East Germany, uh, no matter which party held the chancellorship, and no matter uh, what negative thing the East Germans might recently have done. Uh, is there any chance that the parties in South Korea could create a South-South common policy toward near North Korea that could withstand elections every five years? Well, um, the 
case of uh, Korea is different from uh, that of Germany in, in terms of um, origin of this division, the pattern of interaction between the two uh, systems. The biggest difference uh, is the Korean War. The war was a defining moment um, in the inter-Korean relations, and it made the relations uh, between the two Koreas very difficult uh, and very different from um, those of the two uh, uh, Germanys. At the same time, we have to pay attention to the fact that the two major political uh, uh, groups in South Korea, which took shape um, in, in the process of democratization, adopted uh, different views and approaches to North Korea and inter-Korean relations. In today's Korea, your view vis-a-vis -vis, uh, North Korea and inter-Korean relations is the most important factor uh, defining your political orientation or in locating uh, your place in the political uh, spectrum, whether you are progressive or conservative. As such, uh, the issues of inter-Korean um, relations and North Korean uh, nuclear problem are very divisive one in South Korea. So in the current uh, political landscape of South Korea, convergence of uh, opinions and bipartisanship between political groups, which we saw in a German case, appears to be hard to achieve. Uh, this is the phenomenon which is uh, not helpful uh, for the resolution of the North Korean nuclear problem. Candidate Lee Jae-myung is fully aware of uh, the nature of the issue. He is of the view that it is time to put those counterproductive culture and practices behind and seek an inter-Korean policy detached from ideology and part partisanship and based on reality and uh, pragmatism. He believes that national consensus building is the good starting point. Mr. Lee expects that if his consensus-based uh, and bipartisan approach bears results, he may lead to establishing a basic uh, framework or a template for South Korea's approach to North Korea and its nuclear problem. Uh, as such, um, he is a, 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 the leader who has this kind of uh, brand new thinking. Uh, if if uh, his administration comes to power, then he will reach out uh, the opposition and he will conduct um, nationwide um, uh, uh, discussion to for formulate uh, consensus-based uh, uh, policy lines. That will be, uh, if, if these efforts are successful, uh, that will be a sustainable policy guideline that can go through uh, many administrations uh, in the future. Thank you so much. Uh, we're basically out of time. Uh, do you have some final thoughts you would like to leave with our viewers about uh, your candidate strategy and how it is uh, superior to your opponents? Well, um... Um, on coming March and 9th, um, there will be a presidential election in uh, Korea. Uh, electing the top leader of the country through a fair, transparent, and um, uh, free election has now become a uh, established democratic uh, institution in Korea. Uh, a new president will be elected in about a month. And uh, the new president is expected to face uh, uh, most uh, serious challenges 
domestically and, uh, uh, and, and externally. Candidate Lee will put the Korea-US alliance at the center of his security and foreign policy. And um, on that base, he will pursue inter-Korean and China policy on the principle of pragmatism. When elected, Mr. Lee will meet President Biden in an earliest possible occasion and discuss the ways to meet the challenges of the 21st century together as allies. I'm sure Mr. Lee's security and foreign policy directions will get along with those of uh, President Biden. And I'm confident that it will lead to opening a new era when the Korea-US alliance moves to the next level. Um, I thank you for uh, your attention and I um, express my uh, deep uh, appreciation and respect to Dr. Overholt uh, for your wonderful management of discussion. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ambassador We uh, for a, a very clear, coherent presentation. Uh, we're honored by your presence at this uh, discussion. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye.